Hey guys, welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. Before we get into the episode today, I would absolutely love if you could like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening to this on a podcast, if you can leave us a review, it is so extremely helpful. Thank you so much. And let's talk a little bit about peer pressure. But first, Alex, how was your weekend? My weekend was good. Um, Sue and I are homebodies through and through. <laughs> Nobody saw that, right? If you're watching on YouTube, you just saw Sue try to drink a bottled water with a cap still <laughs> on it. Um, but we are generally homebodies and we've made a push over the past couple of weeks to be more social, to say yes to doing more things with our friends and uh, making, making, new friends. making new friends, getting into new places. And so uh, this past weekend, we were extremely uh, active relative mm -hmm. to what we normally are. <laughs> um, and so Friday night, we had a little bit of activity. We went and, and uh, did yoga with mm -hmm. Sue's sister, um, came back to the house, got to hang out for a little bit, watch a little bit of... I don't know if there's a football. No, there's basketball on. Oh, Big Blue Madness. Big Blue Madness. Go UK. Okay. Um, and then... We got some Mexican before. Got some, oh, yeah, we did. We went to a, a, a spot here in Columbus called Local Cantina, mm -hmm. uh, which was very good. And then Saturday, we... Uh, what did we do? I don't know. But real quick, if you are in the Columbus area and you have the best place to go get fajitas or margaritas then let me know because I'm searching. There's a few that we still need to go to, but I haven't found the one or the place. But the good news is, is that we'll be in Louisville coming up this next week. And they have two of the best Mexican restaurants, one that is a breakfast place slash lunch place, and one that is just authentic Mexican. So delicious. So I'm hoping that we do you, I mean, over. do you want to give them a free shout out or do you just want to <laughs> con huevos i love you sponsor me no uh con huevos though is absolutely delicious if you are in louisville it's so good i have nothing but incredible things to say about it the tres leche pancakes they get you every single time the huevos rancheros add chicken so good alex normally gets the breakfast tacos and then we split tres leches I could go in on it all by myself, but we do split it. Um, and then guacamole, so, so good. It's on Hurstbourne. It's kind of tucked behind like a McDonald's. It's in a weird location, but definitely worth it. And even though you do have to pay for the chips and salsa, it's worth it. It is very much so worth it. So it is. There's my shout out. Yeah. And to any of the brands out there, getting my wife to be a fan of you <laughs> is a really good idea because she becomes so passionate about the things that she enjoys and just you know shouts it from the mountaintops as you just saw <laughs> of these two restaurants that have no idea who she is. Um, <laughs> she Same is, with Jeff Ruby's. Same she's brought with. them lots of business because every friend that's either going to Louisville or lives in Louisville, she tells them that they have to go to guacamole, they have to go to uh, Conuevos or yeah, whatever. Um, and she just is so passionate. So any brands, you know, all the brands that already sponsor her know this mm -hmm. of just like Legion and Story and Nugo Bars. Um, and it, all three of those get so much love from her because she really does love all those brands. Mm -hmm. um, so Saturday, I don't think we did a whole lot. I'm trying to remember, honestly. We worked during the day and oh, then we worked I, up until about four or five. So we worked in, into a normal day, but mm -hmm. I can't remember what we did. Because I remember that I thought that I was going to be taking like a half day on Saturday or like only working in the morning. And then the we ended up working with it. You did a lot of cleaning. Oh, yeah. I did multiple loads of laundry. Yes. Cleaned up the laundry room, cleaned up our bedroom, cleaned up our bathroom, the closets. Mm -hmm. um, I got a that. lot of work done, though. A lot yeah. of computer work. Sunday. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Let's skip. <laughs> skip. Not important. If you're an NFL fan, um, we are uh, diehard Packer fans. And this was the first game that we couldn't get on our own TV. So uh, one of the beautiful things with being a Packers fan is that there's these hole-in-the-wall bars all across the U.S. and into other countries that are Packers bars. Mm -hmm. And so you can go to these bars, and it is just Packer fans, mm -hmm. diehard Packer if fans. If you're looking for one near you, we'll link in the show notes the website. It's literally like find a Packers bar, and they'll help you find one near you. Yeah. And so we went there, and we didn't know like how busy it would be, but it was it – was standing room only. We got there right before kickoff <laughs> and it was it was packed to the brim um, and a lot of Packers fans in there. Unfortunately, the Packers didn't play all that well. Uh, we got to introduce ourselves to a lot of Packer fans from the Ohio area, Columbus, Ohio area. And uh, that was interesting. So we may be going back. It was cool. Yeah. Uh, it was different. I think that we 
we need a game plan for next time. Yeah, you got to get there sooner. Our seats weren't the best because thankfully a couple did let us like intrude on their table and sit down. But definitely sitting at the bar would be the best because not only did the seats have backs in the bar, and I'm always looking for a back on a seat, uh, but you just got a perfect vision of the game and you were able just to, you know, be watching the game. Yeah. So overall, we were much more adventurous. I did realize that we probably overdid it because at Sunday night, I was in a position where I was like, I don't feel recharged at all. Like yeah. I, I need one more day to like let my body recoup. So I think that if we continue to do more things, which we are. <laughs> we're doing something this weekend and next weekend. Yeah. So we're already If on we do it. something Friday and Saturday, then we don't do something like we don't do anything at all in Sunday mm -hmm. type situation. Like we can't do all three days. We're not that social. No, we are definitely not. Yeah, we're trying to find that middle ground now. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah. Um, but that low key brings us into peer pressure yeah, just to be able actually. to kind of talk about what it looks like when you are going after either your fitness goals. Um, yeah, that's basically what we're going to be talking about, <laughs> going after your fitness goals and what it's like getting peer pressure. Um, and I would love to talk about the concept of if you feel like peer pressure is good or bad. I feel like it has a very negative connotation, which I agree with and we will get into. But do you personally feel like it's good or bad? I think that it, it, like all things, can be good and can be bad. It depends on where it's stemming from, what it is being you know, pressured towards, um, and, and how the person who is receiving it uh, receives that information and utilizes it. And so I think that having peer pressure in the sense that you have people pushing you to be a better version of yourself, holding you accountable to some of the things that maybe you've put into place from a goal perspective, or challenging you to go out and do things more on the weekends mm -hmm. or, or things of that nature to be more social, I think that's positive peer pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, negative peer pressure would be negative things, you know, <laughs> people wanting to, to bring you down, wanting you to, to not go work out or, um, to eat a way that you don't feel is best for you. And, um, so I think that there's, it, it's a two-sided coin for sure. And I think that you're always just trying to put yourself in a position where you have an understanding of where that's coming from and then how to respond to that peer pressure, um, as it comes your way. Yeah. What's something, do you feel like you're peer pressured anymore? I know that growing up, I probably felt it a lot more in a school setting, in a college setting. I still feel it and being able to talk about what that looks like. But do you feel like you experience a lot of peer pressure at this point in your life? Um, in, in the more positive sense, yes. I, I feel that my convictions and what I believe in um, are strong enough to where if I'm receiving negative peer pressure, it just kind of goes one in one ear out the other. Uh, it doesn't feel as though that it's something that can really impact me or change the way that I think. But I think that the positive peer pressure, um, like the yoga, for example, um, being able to have the the peer pressure of going with you and Sam, and then also the peer pressure of like, I don't want to suck at <laughs> doing anything. I want to be great at all things. And so having the peer pressure of all the yogis around me <laughs> who were significantly better at yoga than myself, even Miguel's laughing back here. <laughs> <laughs> Having the peer pressure of all the yogis around me who are kicking my ass in some of these, you know, poses, um, was it pushed me to be better because we talked about it after mm -hmm. the session of like my natural instinct would be to like play it like the cool guy and be like, oh, I can't do that or I don't want to, you know, embarrass myself type situation. But at the same time, like every person was showing up for themselves and was kind of in their own zone the whole time, and I didn't want to be a distraction. Out, nor did I want to stick out like a sore thumb of like, this dude has no idea what he's doing. Now, the sweat that was pouring down my <laughs> face, the inability to get into some of the poses showcased that I had no idea what I was doing or hadn't been doing it for very long. But at the same time, it was positive peer pressure for me to keep pushing to be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that those environments, one thing that I was really happy that you were able to be in that environment is that when I go and do yoga, it did take me a little bit. And we talked about this after. So I think it's helpful to be able to um, 
expand on. But I, when I first started going to yoga, I was watching other people a lot because I didn't know the right poses to do. I didn't know the names of the poses. I was kind of like keeping an eye on the instructor, looking over to see if I was doing the right thing. And I didn't feel that relaxing side of yoga that I wanted to get or other people talked about. I was like, I'm dying here trying to contort my body into these movements and I don't really know what I'm doing and I feel really lost. And I forgot about that because it's been a while since I've started yoga. And Alex had said like, oh, I was kind of watching some other people. And I said, oh, it's for me, I, I wasn't even paying attention to anyone else. I was just doing doing what was best for me and really paying attention to what my body was asking me. And the instructor led it very well of being able to talk through of you need to show up for your body and what feels good to you instead of doing what other people are doing. But at the same time, you weren't sure of what exactly all of the poses were. And so you had to watch a little bit. So I'm excited for you to get into yoga and be able to lose yourself a little bit more. Um, but I was extremely proud of how you just like pushed yourself to show up uh, because it would have been easy to give up in that instance. Yeah, no, I, I think that um, an older version of myself would have gone the one time not been as good as I was and been like, I'm never going back. But I think my, my current version of myself, I was like, I wanted to go the next day. Like I wanted to go back and keep trying and do more. And I've spent time of just like looking up videos of each of the poses so I can like put a motion with the name type situation so that I can be in a place where I'm more understanding of what I'm being asked to do rather than like looking around. I mean, I was in the downward dog, right? And I'm like watching the people behind me trying. So I'm like tucking my chin even more and like contorting my body to make sure that I'm watching what the person behind me is doing. And so it was like, it was taking away from, you know, the piece that I was supposed to be in um, and all those different factors. But yeah, it, it's one of those things from a, a peer pressure standpoint and even to go you know, further within the examples of having friends around you that are putting themselves in situations that they're pushing themselves to be better. Like people that you're surrounding yourself with, putting themselves in situations where they're chasing a better version of themselves is great peer pressure as a whole. Um, and to let's all use Hayden as an example where he was kind of the you know uh, original like root of me wanting to go to the yoga class as a whole because he's been getting into yoga himself as well as jujitsu. And so it's one of those things where one of my dearest friends is putting himself into very uncomfortable situations, challenging himself, getting his ass kicked in jujitsu. And I'm like, I want to do, I, I know that I need to, you know, pick things in my life to do this too. And so it was like positive reinforcement to, to go after and, and put myself in those uncomfortable situations. The peer pressure from Taylor and I wasn't <laughs> enough. <laughs> Taylor, if you're listening to this, we did not do our job enough to, I don't know. to really convince him to get on to yoga. I don't know, but I mean, you and you and Taylor, are already really good at said thing. Yeah. So it's like easy because it, it's kind of like um, it's the aspect of client to, to uh, or no, coach to client of like recommending different things to do within your training or recommending to do different things. It's like, well, you're much better at the thing so that the value of what your you know, value of the information you're sharing with me may not be as strong. Mm -hmm. But if it's coming from another person who you know is not good at the thing and it's like, I'm loving this, it's really hard, but I'm loving it. It's like, okay, I resonate with that. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I'm just, you know, got to give you your hard time grief. still. Yeah. <laughs> and with talking about just being around people, I mean, we've had these conversations with Miguel as well of being in a workspace around other people that work hard yeah. is so encouraging. And even though it's not like there's peer pressure in the way of someone being like, just work a little bit longer or just do X, Y, and Z. It's a culture of we all want to work hard. And when there's a day where I'm feeling like, oh my gosh, I really just could care less about doing this right now, uh, being able to know that there's this accountability of other people working hard towards something pushes me to be like, okay, get get your big girl pants on, go into the office and get your work done. And it's like a positive pressure around me of I always want to elevate either to the level you guys are at or above. Mm -hmm. And so it's extremely helpful. And even within 
like going on walks. There's times where I will not be planning to go on a walk and you'll say like, hey, do you want to go on a walk? And it's so much easier because you're already going on it to be like, oh yeah, I, I will go ahead and go on that. Yeah. And it's kind of, again, that positive peer pressure of I should go and do this. And I've even been asking our neighbor to go on walks, um, especially because she's expressed of like, she used to live in New York and she got so many steps and now she doesn't get as many steps. And so I've been trying to ask her to go on walk so that she does have that accountability as well as selfishly. I not only am trying to make a new friend, I'm really putting that effort forth. Um, but when Alex can't go with me, I like to go with someone and just be able to chat a little bit and have some time. So I think that it can be extremely positive like we've talked about. Yeah. I think that uh, this is a conversation I feel like I have a lot with like solo entrepreneurs or individuals who are you know, living by themselves and now working from home, it is so easy to let yourself just kind of like, ah, today's not my day. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just kick my feet up and relax. I'm gonna watch movies today. I'm gonna play video games today. I'm gonna do whatever my heart desires because I'm the only person I have to stay accountable to. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you start to invite the external um, sources of accountability where we have each other, we have Miguel, and we're all uh, wanting to see success as a whole. And so it, it elevates us all as you talked about. And so it's, it's similar to inviting a coach into your fitness journey where where yes, it, it, it can be uncomfortable. It can be challenging to like face head on of some of these shortcomings that you have in place, but having that accountability, having that peer pressure from that external source can be so beneficial to you in so many different ways. And so um, it's one of those things that I feel like a lot of people can resonate with when, when we you know went into all working from home or you're a solo entrepreneur trying to get your business onto its feet by yourself. There are a lot of days that it's like, if I had an extra source of, of peer pressure or extra source of accountability, I probably would have pushed through, but I was just alone. And so I, I, I set the own, I set my own standard thus today. I didn't do anything type situation because yeah. I can even speak for us prior to Miguel being here. We had a lot more days where if you weren't having a good day and I also was not having a good day, forget it, bro. <laughs> today we're not working. But like now with Miguel here, it's like, even if you and I are not having a great day, we still push through and, and make, you know, something happen. It may not be our entire list of work, but having that extra, extra peer pressure and accountability is tremendous help because we've had so much more productive days than what we would have had last year. And I think that having that extra source of accountability was helpful. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? We'll look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah, and I think... Yes, we talked about yoga, but group fitness in general is a good example of this, of you, again, have a class that you're going to, and then you have other people working hard. So you're like, oh, I'm going to work hard. And I think a very good example of this is going to be something like CrossFit, um, where I know when I went to a CrossFit class with McKenzie when we were in Louisville last, there were so many times I wanted to give up. Because it was just, that was my first time going to a CrossFit class. And I just don't do that type of training. It was completely new to me. And thankfully, it was familiar exercises with me. But it was very new. And there's so many times I want to just be like, okay, peace, I'm done. But having that encouragement and having everyone be like, we're finishing this together was like, oh, okay, I, I can keep going. And I can keep seeing that for myself. And that really helps with unlocking the next level. Level mentally of knowing that I am capable, I was able to accomplish this. And I'm sure you felt that way finishing the yoga class yeah. of like, oh, that was hard, but like I did it. And now it's like, let's go on to the next one. Yeah. I, I think that the, the obsession of just getting better and realizing that you're just more capable and more capable of things is the, the thing that uh, you gravitate towards the most in these times of like, things that are more quantifiable within getting better at the yoga or getting better at CrossFit, for example, um, being able to have those things that you can measure and see the change being so tremendously beneficial to you continuing on with whatever goals you have. And 
oftentimes getting those goals started involves a little bit of peer pressure or involves a little bit of extra accountability um, to be able to push past those boundaries because left to your own vices, as we've continued to reiterate, more often than not, you're going to be able to find every excuse possible to not do something mm -hmm. um, until those other things are brought in. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, this wasn't as crazy as I thought it was. I didn't think it, this wasn't as hard as what I thought it was. Um, and so, yeah, it's a very valuable thing. Yeah. And I'll even seek out peer pressure without even the other yeah. person knowing that I'm seeking it out of just like, I know that this is something the other person is going to do. And if I say I'm going to do it with them, like I have to follow through because right. I already know that they're going to do it. And they're not technically like sitting there being like, come on, Sue, you said you were going to do it. But it's kind of like that extra accountability and kind of a swapped peer pressure where I'm like, I know that I have to follow through with this and I'm putting this on myself, this self pressure, honestly, to go and accomplish the thing that I want to. Right. And, and I think that that's like uh, something where you're challenging yourself intrinsically so that you you don't come off to the other person that you admire or that you uh, appreciate their um their opinion on things and those different factors. Like you don't want to come off to a friend as flaky or you don't want to mm -hmm. come off to a friend as like, eh, they kind of just came and half-assed it. Like it wasn't fun to be with them type situation. Mm -hmm. Like you want to be someone that other people want to be around. Mm -hmm. You want to be someone who um, people can trust and rely on. And so when you put yourself in those situations, it allows for you to strengthen those components, but also gives you the extra accountability that you're talking about. Yeah, for sure. So let's go ahead and talk about what a lot of us are probably a little bit more familiar with, which is going to be negative peer pressure. And with us getting into this topic, we're going to talk about kind of some things that might come up, um, things you might hear from people, as well as our personal experience, how we talk to clients to get through this. Because I know I used to struggle with peer pressure so much, and it came from wanting to be a people pleaser and wanting to fit in. And so much of high school and especially the beginning of college, I didn't even ever check to ask what I wanted to do. I just was always saying yes because I felt like it was the right thing to do to fit in and to be a part of something. And you could literally sway me so easily. If you're like, hey, you want to go do this? I'm like, ah, they'll be like, come on. I'll be like, okay. Like, I would literally give in so, so easily just because I didn't really have a strong sense of self. And that's one thing I really wanted to talk about when it comes to peer pressure and why I asked also if you had felt peer pressure recently and you had kind of expressed of like, when it comes to negative peer pressure, I just already know how I feel and I, I move on from it. And I think that that's really at the core of a lot of peer pressure is being very secure and confident within what you want out of life. Yeah. Like, how do you feel as though that you have approached like negative peer pressure now? Or like, how have you gotten out of the people pleasing that caused you to be more giving into peer pressure? I think I'm so certain on my why and so certain on what I want to do with my life that I am not going to be swayed by someone because I'm able to kind of weigh the pros and cons and I've already made the decision. So someone peer pressuring me isn't going to sway my decision because I've already very sternly made that. So let's go ahead and give the example of like going out to eat or going and drinking. Um, I normally know going into a situation exactly how I'm going to handle it with food. And I don't at this point let people push me around for what they might feel more comfortable with. Maybe it's that we are all going out to drinks and I'm the only one not having a drink or we're going out to a restaurant and I'm not um, indulging in something that everyone is indulging in or we're going and playing cards and everyone has snacks and I don't have a snack. Whatever the situation may be, I feel like I'm so confident within what I truly want that I am not in a place that I'm going to kind of fall into peer pressure or even let it affect me the way that it used to mentally because it's kind of like end of conversation. Let's let's get on to the next thing. I think that something to expand on with that is that you have to take an approach that you're not drawing greater attention to yourself for not doing that. 
mm-hmm. or like, you know, giving yourself this pity party or wanting these pats on the back for like not doing something that other people are doing. Like I'm, I'm not drinking tonight. I'm not like, just don't drink. Like you don't need to announce it to everybody. Like it doesn't matter that much. And, um, like it, if you're needing that external validation, I think that you have to uh, kind of rewind a little bit and see why you're making that decision. Are you doing it because you're wanting other people to like praise you for it? Mm-hmm. That's it's not strong enough of a why that you're doing it, and you're probably not going to stick with it. Mm-hmm. But like if your your reasoning is because of of X, Y, and Z things that are very important to you as to why you're not doing it, you're not going to draw attention to yourself. And when you're asked about it, you're going to be able to give an adequate answer, and everyone's going to be able to move on. Like the I I feel as though. And, uh, you know, this is something that since we met, I've been pretty good with, like, mm-hmm. this is something that I've always kind of had more so. Um, and I always feel as though that if you leave the door just slightly cracked open for what that person's asking you to do, and you're like, no, 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 then that, per- like, everyone's just going to keep inching that door more and more open until it's wide open. And now you're giving in to whatever the peer pressure is. And so keeping that door closed, if you will, and being very certain in what you're saying, um, and being very honest in what you're saying, not trying to create a, a facade of like, well, I'm doing it because of this. And then, then being able to give a rebuttal as to why that doesn't matter mm-hmm. is very valuable. And so if you keep that door shut, locked, not even a chance of opening that up, people will leave it alone. And it just like, you know, you're able to move forward with things. Um, so I think that that's, you know, I- important and not drawing attention to yourself, not making a big deal out of it is really I- important as a whole when it comes to working through these things. Yeah, I think it is a little bit situational as far as having the door completely closed, um, just based on the situation. That's why I said a situational. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of expand on what I mean by that is let's go ahead and say some of the comments you might have heard or do hear of is um, you're really not going to eat with us or you never eat. Can't you cheat just one time? Live a little bit. You're withering away on us. Oh, come on. Just one more cookie. Be fun for once. Different comments like that. And when they are that I'm going to say abrasive because I do feel like those are abrasive, even if people don't mean them always that way. They're not intended that way. Yeah, they're kind of trying to talk to you and they don't understand that that's a boundary for you. And so when they do come across like that, I think that's a very good time to be stern of like, hey, this is not what I want to do right now. And we'll give some examples of how those can happen. Uh, But I think that sometimes, like, let's go ahead and use alcohol as an example. We'll go out to eat, and they'll come around and see if anyone wants drinks. And sometimes I'll be like, oh, not right now. And that just gives me a little bit of space. So normally people have their drinks. They forget about it. Sometimes the... um, the waiter or waitress doesn't come back over and ask about drinks, especially if I've sat the menu down. Um, Or even if they do, I'll be like, oh, no, not tonight. I'm just not going to have one tonight. But that allows it to be a little bit more comfortable if you do get anxious with confrontation and not knowing how to specifically tell someone, I'm not doing this for X, Y, and Z. And this is very different for each person because it depends on who is in your life and who you're interacting with on a daily basis. I will say that like for Alex and I, we are not interacting with as many people regularly that peer pressure us because people are very aware of how we are going to go about a situation or what our wants and desires are. And with you talking about you being very good at peer pressure, like you and Katie, we've always said, are like the best when it comes to peer pressure. I say Brandon too. (laughs) Yes, and you don't give in to peer pressure. And since that's become the norm for you, people don't even try to peer pressure (laughs) you because they know he's not going to budge on that. So it is something where we want to vocalize that we understand that that might not be the same for you in your life, right? now. Um, But we've cultivated that from our actions and from what we've experienced that people know not to push us on certain subjects. Um, And sometimes when it's kind of like a one-off where someone doesn't know, then I'll just try to deal with it as like small as possible. Like you said, not making a huge deal about it and not getting butt hurt when someone doesn't know. You might have not vocalized it to someone that that's something that you're really trying to work towards. I I will also say though that 
we're more mostly speaking on close friends and people who are around us consistently. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we go around because I think that some individuals listening are going to be in a situation where it's like, well, I go to dinner with my coworkers mm -hmm. that I only get to see very seldomly, or I'm going into business meetings where I'm trying to gain a customer, then this is the only interaction I'm having with them. And so then trying to figure out how to navigate the peer pressure that maybe them wanting to have appetizers and uh, entrees, desserts, multiple drinks, and really like run up the bill on the company type situation. <laughs> um, and then them being in a situation where they're trying to stay very good within their their fitness journey um, or trying to lose weight or whatever it is. Um, how Now, this is not a situation that we're in frequently, mm -hmm. but this is a situation that our clients are in very frequently. And so what are some of the suggestions that you have to those individuals or how do you approach that with your clients. Yeah. So if it is someone that you know a little bit less closely, it's not going to be a friend or a family member. Um, one thing is being able to suggest an alternative if possible. So for the example of you're going and getting drinks, maybe you switch it to like, hey, let's go and get coffee as that's a much easier option to not have to deal with, oh, you are drinking, you aren't drinking. It's just even if you don't want coffee, you can get tea or you can get another drink at a coffee shop and it's not odd for you to do that. So you can kind of flip um, it into your circumstance or put the ball in your court of, okay, let's go and do coffee or let's go and do something else that is going to allow us to still accomplish the goal um, and play, but be able to make sure that I'm in a place that I feel the most comfortable. Um, the other option here is being able to decide depending on the situation what you're going in with. Again, this is something that if you have already made the decision, it is so much harder to be peer pressured because you've already been secure in what your decision is. So if you're going and let's say you are going to dinner with a client or going with coworkers, there's going to be times where if you've already decided, hey, I'm not going to have alcohol and I'm going to order this on the menu, I already know what I'm going to order. If someone tries to push you, you already know what you're going to do, so you're not going to be pushed. But the way that you can be polite is you're not going to be like, I literally have fitness goals. How dare you go ahead and suggest I do that? You're just going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm not really in the mood for that tonight. Or, oh, that looks so good. I hope you guys enjoy that. I got full earlier today. Um, something popped up and like someone brought food over and now I'm too full. So don't be afraid to give a few excuses, even if they're not 100% true, because that can just get you out of a situation with being polite and being able to make sure everyone's feelings involved are the most taken care of, I would say. Um, and it can be when it comes to having a drink of like going to a bartender and saying like, hey, can I just have a Coke, but I can, can I have it in the actual glass that you serve alcoholic drinks in? So they're not going you a sippy cup, as I've seen that at bars before, if they give you a completely separate cup and it's like, I'm trying to fit in here. Um, so being able to know like, hey, I can go ahead and ask for just a, a Coke or a, um, what are they, mineral waters or like a soda water and have that with a lime in it. So it looks like I'm drinking and no one's going to make a comment on it and I'm still able to be social. Um, but my thing is I always just try to be elusive. Like I, people aren't going to know like what my situation is because again, I'm not sitting there being like, I'm on a diet, nobody talk to me. I'm sitting there just being social, going with the flow, kind of jumping around, talking to different people. I have the drink in my hand and no one's the wiser of, oh, was she eating all of the nachos that everyone else was eating or was she drinking an alcoholic drink? So exactly what Alex said, of the more that you can downplay it and just make it more casual and more normal, the easier it's going to be in those situations. Yeah. And I think that another you know, practical example is going to be, I, I and this is actually something that I worked with a client yesterday on, is that um, she goes to her grandparents every other night, I think three nights a week, and her grandmother makes dinner for them. Not a chance are they going to be able to track that, mm -hmm. nor is she really going to be able to turn things away type situation. She can have things in, in her own portion sizes and those different factors, but is not going to have a whole lot of control of how the food is prepared and what is being served. That is, you know, she doesn't have a whole lot of time with her grandmother. She mm -hmm. wants to make her grandmother happy. I totally understand. Um, and so how we've gone about that aspect of things is that 
the, the, the days that she's going over to her grandparents, we just structure her food differently on the meals that are that she does have control of. So like every other meal outside of her dinner, we just decrease the overall uh, caloric intake of those meals and allow for her, her to have a little bit of a greater surplus potentially within the foods that she's consuming at her grandma's house and, and those different factors. And so there may be situations where you have to do that to be flexible within the meals surrounding to where you don't have as much control of what's being served or you're going to a banquet or, or things of that nature that are just kind of out of your control and it's gonna be easier from like like a, an ROI standpoint. I know that that's one thing that we'll probably dig into greater is just weighing the pros and cons of like, if I don't eat, is it more of a distraction than it would be just to for me to have the plate, eat the portion sizes that I know would be manageable within whatever my dietary intake is going to be and just go on with it? Because there's certainly going to be situations where it's that. I, I don't want anyone to think that you know from this podcast, we're just saying to always say no, mm -hmm. like yeah. be so strong in that. And there's no situation that any other option is is a thing because when it comes to these things, there's so many different ways and so many different circumstances that put into play that change what the answer needs to be. And I think that that's one of the more challenging things. And I think that you, as you continue to strengthen your convictions and you, you continue to just be stronger in what you want, then you continue to strengthen the aspect of understanding when it's going to be best for you to just go with the flow of things, when it's best for you to say no, when it's best for you to manage the um, options as a whole. Um, and I think that the just continuing to come back to what's most important to you and why is that thing most important to you um, is really important. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Yeah. And like you said, of just being able to plan a little bit of if that client came into um, going to hit her grandmother's and never looked ahead and never planned, then it would probably be yeah. a little bit of a clusterfuck trying to get it figured out. And yeah. it would feel near impossible to make it work within her schedule. But I have had clients that have to go to dinners with clients or they have a situation pop up where it's like a family member that is literally not going to understand or or it's a family member that they do not want to offend, or they're going to see like a um, a boyfriend or girlfriend or a spouse's family, and they don't feel like they can have that conversation. That's where we go into a little bit more of pre-planning of what does this look like in context of your week and in context of your goals, and how can we make these align the absolute best? So uh, I had a client that was going out of town like every weekend of this month, and we chose to keep her food a little bit lower. I was originally going to raise her food, but since she had so many events popping up this month, we kept her food um, a little bit lower instead of raising it and gave her flexibility for like a few different days over certain weekends and laid out exactly what it was going to be. But really, like you said, of making sure the things that she could control, she had control of. And just because she was going out of town for the weekend didn't mean that she wasn't going to prep any food or not have anything prepared or set herself up for success. Because um, one of the situations was a wedding and she obviously wanted to eat the meal at the wedding, be able to be so social, be present. And I was like, I need you to work backwards from the wedding instead of waking up on the day of the wedding and thinking, okay, I'm going to try and get a few meals in with quality protein. You might, especially with kind of how wedding schedules go. All right, I need to be at the wedding at 5 p.m. So that means we need to leave at 4.30 p.m. What does this look like for my day of when I need to get in my other meals? So I am prioritizing. I'm not going into the meal starving, um, but I'm still able to enjoy that meal and and overall, my calories stay in a similar spot. So it's really about figuring out what you want to be able to either indulge in, and I don't want to use the word indulge as far as like having a meal with family is massive indulge, <laughs> indulgence, but being able to truly decide what do you want to do when it comes to food and how does that align with what your goals are and what the rest of your week or the rest of your month looks like. Um, so that's what I would say when it comes to especially people that possibly aren't friends or family, or um, you're not going to have as much control no matter what the situation is. Yeah. I think the two major takeaways of, of that example are that 
we are, are teaching how to uh, navigate nutrition through real life experiences, which are going to be things that you're able to take over the long haul, how you continue to apply as your, uh, your current children or future children are going through sports and going through uh, different clubs and going through high school and so on and so forth, or, or navigating different job opportunities and those things and still being able to manage your nutrition. I think that those are the tools that are so invaluable from a coaching experience of really having a coach that's hands-on. And then also the, the second thing being something where realizing how much better your body feels by mm -hmm. being nourished rather than um, being in a place of, of trying to uh, restrict. And it's like, well, I have a, I have a wedding later and I'm going to, I'm going to have tons of drinks. I'm gonna have tons of cake. And it's like, I'm just not going to eat all day today and then just go ham at the wedding. And it's like, you feel so much better if you just have breakfast, have lunch, have a lighter snack before you go and then go and enjoy the dinner that's at the wedding, have a couple of drinks, have a little bit of cake. And like, that's a day, like you mm -hmm. ate normal, it's okay. You didn't have to have this super restrict and overeat, restrict overeat kind of mentality. And getting out of that is another like invaluable thing that I feel like we teach on and have, like it is one of the most, um, I don't know, fulfilling things from a coaching standpoint to have someone really get that part and how those, because those are like, those are tools that they use from the time that they work with us until the time that they're no longer on this earth. Like so valuable of tools that are better for their health long-term. And it just makes me, I mean, it makes me so proud of like what we are able to do. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I absolutely love when clients are able to have that realization of it's not going to be like a blanket statement for every trip, every food. It's going to be situational and you have the power in those situations to figure out what the outcome is going to be. And so when it comes to peer pressure, one thing that when I look back on my life, I get a little bit sad when I look about the negative peer pressure that I gave into. And it literally was just because I didn't have an answer or I wasn't in a place that I felt like I could stand up for myself. I felt very anxious or uncomfortable having the conversation. It's like, so I'm just letting someone else decide my life. And at the end of the day, most people aren't planning your life for you and aren't going to have like this grand plan for you. And so you need to show up for yourself of what do I want to happen instead of just always defaulting to what everyone else wants. It's human nature to care about yourself more than you care about anybody else. Yeah. It's just how it is. And you yeah. always have to keep that in mind when other people are recommending things, other people are encouraging you to do things to really uh, double down on understanding where that um, you know recommendation or where that uh, peer pressure is stemming from. Yeah. And again, sometimes they don't mean it in a negative way or they don't realize the impact of what they're saying. And then that's where like it's not your duty to uh, – understand or to fix someone else's like uh, discomfort or maybe they're jealous that you're following or your just plans pure stupidity. or stupidity. Like it's not your responsibility, but it is your responsibility of how you respond. And that can be the difference between either maintaining a friendship and a relationship or not. Um, and that could be positive or negative depending on the relationship or friendship. But it can also be like the difference between that person possibly making those type of comments to someone who isn't going to handle it the way that you are. And so you can help people in that situation of, hey, this is how this was perceived, or I would really appreciate if you don't push this boundary for me. Um, so I do want to talk about some things just when it comes to like eating out or eating in groups that you can do, whether you're trying to stick to a fitness goal and you're in a dieting phase or you're just trying to navigate through fitness and everyday life of there's gonna be situations and events that pop up, there's gonna be meals that pop up, and I wish I knew that I didn't have to be like a recluse to still follow my fitness goals um, or have the confidence to realize I didn't have to completely isolate myself to still reach those goals. So one of the things I already mentioned, but it's worth mentioning again, is suggesting an alternative. Maybe it's something where you regularly go to a bar or a pub with friends. Um, and maybe you say, hey, maybe this week we go for a hike or this week we try out this. So be the one to suggest it. If you're frustrated with the uh, 
thing that is being done. You can't really complain too much if you've never suggested doing something else um, and being able to kind of change what the circumstances as a whole. Um, and then let's go ahead and take a situation like you are going to watch a football game or you're going to a football tailgate and it might feel like there's all this food there and I can't eat any of it or someone's going to ask why I'm not eating. That's when I normally suggest bringing something to share. So especially when it comes to tailgate or a party like that, having something where you know the ingredients, you know you can enjoy it and feel good about it. And then it can also be that someone can eat that and also maybe realize that not all healthy food tastes bad um, can be a really helpful moment as well as it's you're looking out for yourself and having that ready. And a little side note from that is I always used to kind of see what was going to be the situation when it came to food. Um, so you can, if you feel comfortable, like text people that are going to be there of like, hey, what's the situation or what's the food going to be? Um, I know at this point in my life, people just tell me what the food is going to be because they know I'm likely going to ask. But let's take, for example, my parents, if they're going to grill out burgers, they're normally going to choose like an 80% meat. And I still want to be able to enjoy burgers with them, but I want to make sure that I can support myself and my goals. And so I might bring just a leaner meat and throw it on the grill and just keep the same as everyone else. It doesn't um, have to be as big of a deal. So always just being able to remind yourself it's not as big of a deal. And that's going to help you with how you handle and how you address different situations. Because at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. It's just how I choose to eat. Um, the last few that I'll share then are going to be sharing your why. So this can be helpful, especially when it comes to closer friends and family. Of Oftentimes, people don't know how to support you. Maybe you've changed recently in finding this fitness journey. And just sharing your why, why you're doing it, what goals you have can be helpful so that they can support you. Maybe they just don't know how to support you or that that is a new goal for you. Um, as well as finding your support, you're going to have all different kinds of friends. Uh, and I know I personally have friends on all in different buckets and groups. And there's going to be different friends that I go to for support when it comes to my fitness goals versus others. So being able to find who those are and really being able to pour those goals into them, use for accountability and support instead of trying to pour into someone who's shown you time and time again isn't going to su support those specific goals. Um, and also being able to recognize, um, and I have said this a little bit, but those comments often come from either lack of knowledge or jealousy, like the crab theory of people will literally pull you down as you're trying to get to the top. And so this can happen of, again, making sure that you are choosing options that you feel good about instead of just leaving it in someone else's hands to make them feel a little bit more comfortable in the moment because you're the one who has to live the rest of your life. And that comfort for that one person in the moment might not equate, like Alex said, for that return on investment on what that comfort is for you in the long term. Um, so being able to really make a plan for yourself and be confident within what your decision is, but also feeling free to just be able to say like, oh, I I'm not going to have that tonight, or I'm not really in the mood for that. You can change how you phrase things, especially when it comes to food. Instead of saying, I can't have that, or I don't want to have that, being like, oh, I'm not in the mood for that tonight, or I'm really enjoying the meal that I'm eating now, or thanking them for offering and changing the subject. Uh, so the the more that you can make it normal and not make it not saying that you never have to make it uncomfortable for someone because there definitely are people that you will have to do that for, but like realizing it doesn't have to be uncomfortable and you can have a conversation and let people in on what you're doing to allow you to do that thing. Coming back to the the idea of sharing the fitness goals or things that you have going on within fitness try to simplify it as much as you can, as well as understand who you're talking to. Um, because I think that this is a, a shortcoming that I've run into myself of over explaining exactly what I'm doing. Whereas the person that I'm talking to has almost zero fitness knowledge in general. And it's like, well, I just talked significantly over their head, maybe felt made them feel uncomfortable um, or like discouraged further conversation because they're like, oh, I, I have no idea what they're talking about. I'm just going to walk away type situation. So be cautious of, of how you're sharing it. And if it's just simply like, I'm 
spending a lot of time in the gym. I'm trying to lose weight at this moment. And that's all you really say, even though there's greater complexity to what you're doing. It's not really a, a time, nor is it maybe the person that you need to, and I'm using air quotes for those who are not watching, like brag about the situation mm -hmm. with, um, is, is going to be helpful for you and being able to, I, at least for me, things that I like to do is spend a lot more time listening than talking. Mm -hmm. So as they ask those questions, potentially being able to pivot out of that conversation to make it more about themselves because 90 plus percent of people are going to want to spend more time talking about themselves rather than hearing something about another person type situation. And so letting them have that time and, and just being able to sit and listen rather than it continuing to be the the focus of like what your fitness is, how you're going about it, what's the diet that you're following, what's the training that you're doing, where do you train, all those things that it's like, is this is just small talk. I'd rather, you know, if we're gonna have small talk, I'd rather you just talk and me listen. <laughs> um, so that's a, one thing that I would drive home. Yeah. Well, that's really the the main bulk of everything that I wanted to be able to talk about. Um, but I do think that peer pressure, like we mentioned, can be positive and negative. And the biggest thing that's helped me when it comes to negative peer pressure is getting very clear on what I want out of life. And that took time to figure out and to be able to get to that end solution. But it did help having Alex of just that confidence of I can just say no and that's it um, and move on to the next conversation. And you've always been able to be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm just not going to have that tonight and move on from it, not make a big deal about it. And that can make all of the difference of you even being stressed going into a social situation of, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to explain this and go through X, Y, and Z when you might be making a little bit too big of a deal out of it and you can just kind of brush it off and move on with your night. Yeah, I would say that one thing that I had to convince myself of is that someone else's energy that they're bringing to the circumstance does not mean that my energy has to match that. Like I can come with my own energy and be confident within that. And, and I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not uncomfortable. I feel very confident in what I'm doing. I feel very confident in how I'm presenting myself, what I'm wearing. Thus, that's my energy. You can bring whatever energy you want into the environment and I'm going to stay, you know, me type situation. And I think that that takes time to get to, and you really have to work towards that because there's certainly times that I can recall in my, in my life. And this was part of the, the yoga thing as well. Mm -hmm. Times in my life where I just took on the energy of every other person. So if the room was overwhelmed, I was overwhelmed. Um, and I realized that at yoga, this was kind of the epiphany moment for me that there was a lot of people around me that were overwhelmed or uncomfortable. Um, and I did not feel that way. Um, and I think that it, that just comes with a lot of internal work as a whole. And I encourage everyone to you know challenge themselves on that to get better and better as, as time goes on. Awesome. Well, that's what we got for you. I can't even talk on peer pressure. Um, and hopefully you do not have a lot of experience with negative peer pressure, but these tips were helpful for you and being able to really advocate for yourself at the end of the day. Um, and I hope that you have people in your life that do have a positive peer pressure influence on you um, and being able to really just continue to level up and recognize how capable you are. Um, but I hope you enjoyed chatting with us, being able to hear about our weekend, our crazy plans. <laughs> um, and we'll catch you in the next one.